Hello, this is Leonard Marini from Local Hero Post, and this is another Scratch tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at using the tracker and doing a combination of uh, manual keyframing and tracking windows, um, where you can do better tracks than just what the tracker can do by combining a couple different techniques. So here's a shot. Let's just do a basic grade. This is red raw we're looking at, at full res. Uh, okay, so let's say we're happy with this uh, bit cinematic moonlight feel here. Okay, let's say we're happy with that. Um, in this case, the director wants to change the color of the dress. He loves everything about it except the color of the dress. Uh, after the fact, he wants it to be a very garish uh, red dress, and it, it, uh, it was purple on the day. So uh, what we would do is... Um, Let's start by getting a basic shape around her so that when we pull her key, she's within a garbage that works for her. So let's say this is it here. Get a very basic shape around the dress. And then we're going to track it. But obviously, she's going to run in front of the fountain. So uh, we're going to have to make an adjustment there. We're going to use her head in this case because the dress is bouncing around a lot and uh, would bounce the shape around a lot. So I'm going to track it right up until the point where she's about to cross the uh, fountain. So, okay, that's got, that's stuck to her nice there for a moment. And then as she crosses the fountain, I'm just going to manually do a couple of simple keyframes. So I'm just switching over to saying a couple manual keyframes. There. The algorithms in Scratch for, for keyframing are, uh, are very good in terms of uh, softening and Bezier shapes. And so uh, you can see that it's having a nice uh, organic bounce to it. It's not uh, just with a couple keyframes. It's not looking very computerized. And right around here, we'll pick up the track again. And this time, since the shape of the head is going to be getting bigger over time, I'm going to make this tracker really nice and big so that it really stays with her the whole time. Don't want to get too much to the outside. Okay, let's see what the track on that is going to look like. And it's telling me the next 10 frames, which I could, I could up to 25 frames. It's telling me, yes, you, that track is going to work. So let's watch it go. And there it goes. Now, obviously, it lost her when she left the frame. So I'm just going to bin those last couple ones. But up until that point, it, it got it great. And then here at the edge... Right around here, I'm just going to throw away these last couple ones because uh, it's just going to be easier to manually do this. So from here, I'm just going to set a couple last keyframes to track it off the screen. I'm just going to kind of imagine where she would be at that point. She would be somewhere around here. Okay, so now we've got this shape and let's see how it tracks. Okay, very well, across the fountain. And of course, we need it to get bigger over time. Now you could do a scaling track, but I, I find it just simpler in a case like this to just adjust this manually in terms of uh, edit. So right around here, she stays the same size. So I'm gonna flip from axis to edit. And we're gonna just adjust the actual manual points of this garbage mat. So right around here, the dress starts to emerge from outside of the uh, the fountain, so we're going to adjust it up a little bit like this. And let's see where we go from here. So right around here, the second part of the dress emerges, so we want to start extending it to there. She's still inside of her garbage, that's all fine. And right around here, we've lost her again, so we're going to extend it out. This is one of the nicest things about uh, using Windows and Scratch is how much you can alter after the fact and how flexible they are. Okay, and this should probably come out a little bit more, but it, it probably would, would keep her in the shape the whole time. And there we go. So now, uh, I'm going to add some softening to the shape. Okay, change the outer edges a little bit. Okay. So we added some softening. Now let's take a look at how it moves over time. Great. It keeps her in the whole time. And we've tracked the shape. So now let's just do uh, what we wanted to do to the dress. In this case, we'll just use a simple key to key her, but just within that uh, shape. 
So I'm just going to use a simple key here, make it nice and uh, soft, make sure it's nice and thick so it gets the darker areas, the lighter areas. Okay, that is starting to look pretty solid. Add a little bit of matte blur to soften it out. Let's take a look at our key. Okay, that's pretty good. In the beginning there, it's still got a little bit of noise, so I'm going to see if I can't get more of the color, more of a solid key. That's looking pretty good. It's grabbing a little bit of the lips there. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is, after the fact, I'm going to change the uh, shape here so that at all times it doesn't grab the lips. I'm going to hit trim key and that will automatically change the shape over the course of, uh, of its entire journey here so that it never grabs, or I think it won't, so that it never grabs the lips. Let's take a look at that. Good. Okay, so now we've got a perfect uh, key inside of a garbage. We should be good to make our adjustment. So let's make this dress a little lighter and uh, garish red. Okay, I think the director will be happy with that. It's dream sequence, so it's supposed to be a little bit surreal. And let's take a look. Okay, looks great. So that's um, a little bit of advanced uh, tracking and windowing all inside of Scratch. Thank you for watching.